Good morning. Our talk today is Hospital Mattresses, Significant Contributors to Hospital Acquired Infections, which I know all of you all care a lot about. My name is Dr. Edmund Hooker. I am an epidemiologist and a professor of Health Services Administration at Xavier University. I'm also a practicing emergency physician uh, at Mercy Health here in Cincinnati. Conflict of interest, I am the medical advisor for Trinity Guardian, this, who is the manufacturer of the launderable bed barriers. Our objectives today, uh, at the end of the presentation, I want you to be able to explain why modern mattresses require a multi-step process, not a single step, a multi-step process in order to be effectively cleaned and disinfected. Explain how hospitals can overcome the challenges of cleaning these modern mattresses that are now made of polyurethane, and that's a soft, porous surface, not a hard surface like vinyl used to be. Discuss how to identify and mitigate mattress damage in hospitals, and describe the best practices in mattress cleaning, disinfection, and maintenance. So let's get started. So Hospital beds are no longer this very simple device that was made with a vinyl mattress and a simple uh, metal frame. Uh, and it is now a highly, uh, excuse me, a high tech reprocessable class two medical device, just like your endoscope, just like many instruments in your hospital. Uh, your ultrasounds. All of these things have to be reprocessed between usage. The surface uh, or the, of the mattress, which we call the cover, okay, is manufactured now using polyurethane coated fabric. So you've got fabric coated with polyurethane, or there are some that are actually fabric out with polyurethane backing. Those are not the greatest. If you have any of those, I would highly recommend getting rid of them because you can't clean them well. Um, the purpose of this polyurethane covered fabric is to allow for what's called moisture vapor transmission. So what is that? So that is, we all got worried about pressure ulcers. Everybody has. And we didn't like the fact that when you used to lay on a vinyl mattress, you sweated badly and then the moisture was in there and that's helped cause uh, pressure ulcers. So the concept that the engineers came up with was to allow moisture to go through the fabric, but not liquids, okay? So that's a big difference. It's to try to get that moisture away from the person without actually allowing blood and stuff to go through the mattress. So that's great, but the problem with it is that's now a porous surface, which requires a totally different approach and unfortunately, we didn't change our approach. Uh, due to multi-drug resistant organisms, healthcare organism, organizations have had to put really harsh chemicals. I mean, lots of us are using tons of bleach, hoping to kill everything that's on there. The problem is not a single chemical, not one. If you, one of the big takeaways from today, you need to realize that no chemical that's out there today that any of you all are using is approved for use on those mattresses. Every single chemical, please go back to your hospital. Don't believe me. Go back to your hospital. Pull up your bottle of chemical that you're using to clean that mattress. And it's going to say on there, intended for use on hard, non-porous surfaces. Oops. That's a real big problem. So... I'm sorry, don't believe that manufacturer's rep from the chemical company that says, oh, you can use it, no problem. Uh, show him his own label. It's not approved. And there is no evidence that it actually cleans correctly. So what's going on? Um, hospital beds now are a huge patient safety problem. So uh, we've had the FDA in the last 10 years has issued two different safety alerts. Uh, the most recent one was 2017, and they had uh, almost 700 mattresses 
uh, that had failed and it leaked blood and body fluids onto patients. And that's just the 700 they heard about. You and I both know there's a ton more. Um, ECRI in 2019 called uh, the beds the uh, healthcare top 10 healthcare technology hazard. Uh, the AMA just this year, 2023 AMA National Conference, uh, I'll read the resolution, be it resolved that the American Medical Association work with accrediting bodies and interested stakeholders to make sure that poss all possible appropriate care and maintenance measures be undertaken to mitigate infections related to hospital bed and mattress use. The AMA figured this out. We all need to get going on this. We have too long just said, wash your hands and you're done. No, that's important, but that's not the only thing. And we've got to stop saying, well, if we just wash our hands, we're all good. It's just not the case. Okay, so we'll talk more about that. So manual pro reprocessing of the bed, okay, just doesn't work. The bed is being reprocessed in most organizations using a single wiping process. That doesn't work, okay? This results in the mattress remaining contaminated, okay? And causes mattress failure because of the chemicals you're using. It rusts the bed frames, and I guarantee you a ton of you in this room right this minute are saying to yourselves, oh yeah, we got a bunch of rusted beds. Yeah, you do, okay? and it's causing patients to get healthcare acquired infections. We all care tremendously about our patients. Every one of us, not a single person listening to this talk doesn't care massively about every single patient. Unfortunately, we've got to do a better job to protect our patients. So let's look at this. Um, this is a study I did when I was at APIC conference and I was we had a couple of hundred people listening to my talk and I had everybody uh, respond as to whether they were using a single step process or multi-step process. And guess what we found? 86% of the hospitals were using a single step process. This is still there today. Only 14% were using a multi-step process. That's just not good enough, guys. If you are using a single step process, and I know how important it is to turn that bed over. I'm an ER doc. I'm the guy screaming with my 40 holds saying, can you get these people out of my ER? But unfortunately, we owe it to our patients to do a better job of reprocessing the bed so that the patient does not end up getting an infection that the previous patient had. So the one-step process violates the MIFUs, okay? So let me move this thing. I'm going to make my picture a little smaller. It's getting in the way of my titles. Apologies. Uh, so the FDA changed the reprocessing guidelines in 2015. Where did that come from? I think you all know it was the endoscopes. They weren't being reprocessed. And the FDA said, wait a minute. It's not just an endoscope issue. This is much bigger than that. So they said... Bed manufacturers, you have to document for us a process by which your bed, bed and mattress, frame and mattress, can be cleaned and disinfected. Okay, so the hospital manufacturers or the bed manufacturers came up with new instructions for use. And these are now five or six steps. And you may not have known that. Certainly the, the person selling you the bed and selling you the chemicals didn't tell you this. But if you go pull open your manual and make sure you get the new manuals that are post-2015, don't look at a manual that's before that because they're all wrong and they're not compliant. So the one-step violate violates, or one-step cleaning violates some MIFUs and therefore you're violating the Joint Commission standards. So, and I think you probably have already heard the jungle drums beating that the, uh, Joint Commission is out there looking and citing people. So let's talk about a few key definitions that I think you absolutely have to understand uh, that the FDA uses. So cleaning is the physical removal of soil, 
both visible and non-visible, and allows for that subsequent disinfection step. Cleaning is not disinfection. Disinfection is there to kill the microorganisms. And you probably already know this, but I want to say it. If you have a lot of bio burden on that mattress, some shit, some blood, all that stuff, it deactivates your chemical. Your chemical can't kill the microorganisms because it's used up by, by all that organic material. And then the other definition, non-critical device, surfaces that contact only intact skin need low-level disinfection. But the FDA specifically states that items that come in contact with blood or body fluids require intermediate, intermediate disinfection. Okay. Well, what is that? That means we need to have an agent that kills 99.9999% of vegetative bacteria and 99.9% of viruses, microbacteria, mycobacterium, and fungi. Whoa, all right, that's a big deal. That's a lot cleaner than the one-step wipe's gonna ever get you, okay? And I think you need to also understand that all of these chemicals that are approved by the FDA, guess how they're tested? They take a metal plate, they take 60 of them, and they slather bacteria on there, and then they flood that plate with chemical. And then after a defined period of time, they test and see if there's any bacteria left on the plate. I'm sorry, that's not reflecting the real world. That's a joke, okay? That's ridiculous that that's how chemicals get to us as approved, okay? So yeah, I, if I flood a plate for minutes, with chemical, I'm going to kill all the bacteria. But if I'm wiping with one wipe a surface, I'm not killing them, okay? That's what this whole contact time and wet time is all about. So the new MIFUs are five to six step process depending on the manufacturer, but you pre-clean, so you got to remove the big pile of poop on the middle of the bed. You've got to rinse, Oh, yeah, I know lots of you all are rinsing after each step. Not. Okay. Then you have to clean. So we pre-clean. We scooped up the big poop, moved the dirty sheets. We clean now to remove any visible soil. Because remember, the disinfectant's not going to work if there's tons of visible soil. Then we're supposed to rinse off the cleaner. Then another completely separate, distinct step is disinfection. It is not part of cleaning. The CDC, FDA, the manufacturer, everybody says, no, no, these are distinct, separate steps. So your one-step process is completely against the MIFU. Absolutely wrong, should not be done. And then you're supposed to rinse again, because remember, that chemical is harsh, you're using bleach, parasitic acid, peroxide, whatever you're using, oxycide, whatever you're using is going to destroy that mattress. And I guarantee you a bunch of you all have some very badly destroyed mattresses, right? And then you're supposed to inspect the mattress for damage. That's according to the manufacturer. That's not Eddie Hooker asking you to do that. That's not... The FDA asking you, oh, it really is. It's the manufacturer. The person that sold you that bed says you have to do this. Okay? So um, compliance, if you don't comply with the MIFUs, they also can void your warranty. Okay? If you do all of these steps, it's 30 minutes, minutes more. Now, I don't mean... 30 minutes for the bedroom, the whole room. I mean 30 minutes just to do the bed. And I know a lot of you all are giving your EVS workers 20 to 30 minutes to turn the entire room. Not possible. So I'm going to make some CFOs and CMOs and CEOs unhappy, but you got to do this, or you're violating joint commission, you're violating the MIFUs, you're, you're, you're ain't going to be in trouble. It's coming. It's already here. All right. So um, many of the uh, manufacturers also, uh, or excuse me, um, the 
none of these manufacturers have EPA registration for non poor excuse me for porous materials and so if you got a porous mattress which if you have polyurethane you have a porous mattress you don't you're using the wrong chemicals and then bleach is the manufacturer of bleach says don't use it on mattresses it'll destroy the polyurethane oh my god we're all using it on so what the heck happened i already alluded to this so when mattresses were made in the 1970s and 80s they were uh vinyl now, by the way if you go back to the 50s they were actually the same mattress as you have in your house Ooh, god uh, horrible uh, but vinyl uh, was what they were made of up until the 90s. And the problem was, if you ever sat on a vinyl seat from a 1965 Chevy, guess what? You stuck to it in the heat. Well, same thing happened when we laid patients on there at 98.6, and they sweated, and then they got pressure ulcers. So we created these new wonderful beds to try to decrease pressure sores, okay? Okay and the mattresses breathe. They have moisture vapor transmission, okay? Well, the, there's two issues. One, it, these mattresses don't last. The covers last one to two, maybe three years uh, is what the warranty is. But remember, you're using chemicals that are voiding your warranty. You're not following a MIFU process, so you've already voided your warranty, so you're not gonna get any warranty coverage. Uh, love to see you try, okay? I hear some hospitals, basically getting it through almost threatening to switch companies and all that stuff, but it's not going to be a party. So you have got a mattress that's going to fail because the cover's going to get deteriorated by these chemicals. Okay. So I showed back in 2012 and, and many others have shown the same thing uh, that terminal cleaning doesn't work. 83% of the terminally clean, and this is the cleaning after the patient's left, before the next patient, 83% uh, of those still were contaminated with bacteria, including MDROs. Okay. 83% still had bacteria all over. Okay. And I actually told the EVS workers, we are trying to make you look bad. You better clean as good as you can clean. And guess what? 83% still contaminated. And the list of usual suspects, MRSA, BRE, uh, you know, uh, everything's on there, okay? Every nasty bug, Pseudomonas, all of them are on there. And that was what was still on the mattress after they were terminally cleaned. So guys, do not fool yourself to believing you're cleaning these beds with a one-step process. If I can beg you, if you need to stop doing that today. Today. It's got to go away. You all do care about your patients, and I know that. But it, you've got to show it. We can't talk about it anymore. We've got to show it. So you've got to follow the MIFUs, okay? The MIFUs, uh, now the surveyors from the Joint Commission are looking for compliance with the MIFUs. And oh, by the way, you can't make up your own little thing, okay? You can't do that. And I already mentioned the uh, the AMA's resolution, okay? So really, 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 you've got to change what you're doing today. This is not optional, and we've got to do a better job for our patients. I already mentioned the Joint Commission. Uh, they are coming, uh, so uh, it, this is a situation where, um, you know, if you look at the bottom there, hospital reduces the risk of infections associated with medical devices, equipment, and supplies, period. That You got to do it. it. It's not optional, and I don't think you want to be cited by the Joint Commission. Not to mention, when they cite you for that, it's going to end up in the local newspaper. So... Um, they require you to use the manufacturing instructions for use, which is now that multi-step process. Uh, it is important to understand that each patient care item has its own manufacturer's instructions for use for cleaning and disinfection. And the expectation is that the organization will follow those instructions. 
Failure to follow the instructions or misuse creates significant risk to safe quality care. I, I can't say it any better than that. We are putting patients at risk if we're not following the misuse. Okay. So we, you know, again, yeah, Joint Commission, yeah, FDA, yeah, you know, all that. We care about our patients. Every one of you cares about your patients. We don't want to be the reason the next patient gets an infection. And just to say, oh, infections happen. It's just part of doing business. We're giving all these antibiotics. Horse hockey. That's a bunch of garbage. It is. And every one of you know it. We have got to stop this. Well, it's okay to kill a few people with infections. No, it's not. Okay. And I don't think any one of you believe that. We have got to stop this. And the way to stop this is to clean better. All right, here's the CDC. Just put this out. The, you have the colonized patient. They contaminate the surface, the bed in this case. Then the patient, healthcare personnel, touch that bed, and they transmit infections to the other patients and make them now infected or colonized, okay? So the CDC says surfaces contaminated with microorganisms can serve as reservoir of potential pathogens. Oh, come on, we all know that. But I'm glad they said it, but we should all know that. Many of these microorganisms are continuously shed and spread by direct contact onto this and surrounding environmental surfaces. You're laying on the bed all day long, shedding, 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 bacteria all day long, okay? These contaminated surfaces on reusable equipment, the bed, is moved between rooms. Oh my gosh, if you want to, you know, you remember the Where's Waldo, you know, where, where he went all over traveling? Look at your beds. Where's the bed? Where's the Waldo bed? It's going to be on the third floor, then it's going to be on the first floor, then it's going to be in the intensive care, then it's going to be over here, over there, go to the OR. I call them the Trojan horses. The patient gets brought down to the OR on this horribly contaminated bed that's not clean, and then they get their operation and they get thrown back on this contaminated bed. No wonder we get surgical wound infections. If I was a surgeon and I don't want infections, I'm going to mandate that that bed be terminally cleaned with the appropriate MIFU before you put my post-op patient on it. Bingo. Decrease infections. Okay. So the CDC finishes with, therefore, cleaning and disinfection of environmental services is fundamental to reduce potential contribu contribution to healthcare-acquired infections. Inadvertent exposure. Inadvertent Exposure to environmental opportunistic pathogens may result in infections with significant morbidity and mortality. We're killing our patients if we don't do this. So why do they fail? Well, the fabrics change. We've covered that. Uh, the one-step processes do not include that second process of disinfection. Manual wiping is inconsistent at best. I mean, we're asking some wonderful people, EVS workers that want to do a great job, but we're asking them to do the impossible. We're not giving them processes that work. And uh, disinfection is, is changed. You know, if you've got CRS on a bed, you can't do this little wipe and a promise, okay? You got C. diff all over the bed. Wiping a promise doesn't work. Oh, I mentioned the Clorox. This is from Clorox's own stuff, okay? And if you look here, polyurethane, that's your mattresses, uh, and mattress covers, it tells you, and it says here, visible damage to the surface is likely to occur with long-term exposure and some effect on mat material integrity is possible. Surfaces should be wiped with a clean, damp cloth immediately after contact time has been reached to reduce the risk of damage to the mattress. I cut it off a little bit there. The people that make the bleach are telling you, you can't just leave that bleach on there. And I will bet almost every one of you is. So you're destroying the mattress. They're telling you it's going to destroy the mattress. The guys that make the stuff. 
So damage, oh my gosh, it's crazy what it does. So the polyurethane basically just gets destroyed and basically you're down to cloth. And you've seen this on your mattresses. You, you it just, it destroys them. Okay, this is a electron uh, microscope image. Uh, so even this is another person that showed, okay, I showed you that your terminal clean doesn't work, right? Okay, well, Mannion showed that elimination of uh, bacteria, MRSA from a hospital surface is often challenging and approximately one in four rooms remain contaminated with either one of these organisms uh, after four rounds of cleaning and disinfection. Okay, you can even clean it twice and it's still not going to be done correctly if you're doing this one-step process. It does not work. Please stop believing that one-step process works. It doesn't. Uh, I wipes actually spread contamination. I, I can't pronounce this gentleman or lady's name, but in 2020, show, they showed that disinfectant wipes are used. Um, when they're used, uh, they contaminate previously uncontaminated surfaces. Wipes still had visible spores on them after use. We're just spreading the peanut butter all over everywhere. I showed the same thing when I studied it. The mattresses, excuse me, the bed decks, the frame of the bed, was actually more contaminated after cleaning. I cultured it before they cleaned it, after the patient had left, and after they cleaned it, it was more contaminated, more bacteria on it. It's ridiculous. Oh my gosh, uh, we're all CRs uh, scaring the heck out of all of us, okay? Very hard to kill, even with bleach on hard surfaces. Quaternary ammonia is not very effective. Mattresses are porous. You're not going to disinfect them. I, I would get rid of them. If you had a CRS patient, mattress is done. I would completely replace the mattress. I, I wouldn't even believe that you've cleaned that. Please don't. You're, just, you're not going to stop your eye break until you do it. Okay. And the quicker you move to completely eliminate that mattress, burn it, it's the better. Okay. So let's go back through FDA, CDC. Um, mattress covers prevent uh, mattress from being contaminated with body fluids. We're talking about the core of the mattress from being contaminated, okay? Linens, this is from the CDC. Linens and CDC and FDA. Linens are not considered a mattress cover, okay? So you, you've got your mattress cover that comes from the manufacturer and you say, well, I'm gonna add a sheet that's gonna protect me. Come on, you know that's not gonna work. Disinfecting mattress who is a disinfectant that's compatible with the mattress cover is what you're supposed to do. Well, there's nothing. So now what the manufacturer sells you is in order to protect this cover, you're going to have to rinse after cleaning, rinse after you disinfect. Rinse. That means you got to remove it. Oh my gosh. No wonder everybody's mattresses are destroyed. Uh, we got to understand the difference between cleaning, sanitation, which is 99.9%, .9 versus disinfection, which is 99.9999%, depending on whether you're high or low. Uh, Pre-cleaning has got to be done because, again, if you don't remove that big pile of poop, guess what? The disinfectant is going to be basically neutralized and you're not going to end up having a clean mattress. Uh, and then I've already said this many times. I'll say it one more time. None of the chemicals in your hospitals work on soft, poor surfaces. None of them have an efficacy claim. Every one of them is only intended for hard, non-porous surfaces. Metal, concrete, things like that. So to get true high-level disinfection, we need a log 6, or even intermediate disinfection, excuse me. You need a log 6 reduction. Um, you only usually get a log one, uh, or excuse me, if you only get a log one, which is what you're typically getting with one uh, wipe, you'll get recolonization super quickly, super quickly. And this is uh, using glow germ, cleaning it with the one wipe process, and you can just see the amount of stuff that's still all over a mattress after cleaning. It's just covered. Uh, quaternary ammonia compounds uh, only get less than a log one reduction. In my study in 2013, it was a different study than the one I mentioned earlier. 
Mannion, Siegler also showed that these surfaces are still highly contaminated. One step doesn't work. Okay, can we come back to it one more time? Stop using a one-step process. It does not work. Do not believe it works. And I don't think many of you do. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, parasitic acid only gets a log two to log three reduction and didn't reduce C. diff infections with alpha study. My God, we're all worried about C. diff. That's our biggest worry. That's the one that we've made very little progress on. So, real problem. Bleach also was shown to fail to reduce C. diff counts um, and did not reduce C. diff infections in the Anderson study. That's the better D study for the uh, that looked at uh, UV light. Okay, but they also looked at bleach as a substart part of that study. And guess what? The bleach didn't really work that well. Uh, you've got to also get pre, you got to pre-clean. Again, I'm going to mention that again. I'm sorry to keep going over the same points, but if you don't pre-clean, none of these disinfectants will work because they're basically neutralized because it does, there's, they've overwhelmed and there's not enough disinfectant to work. Uh, and then we've already talked about the bleach is going to destroy your mattress, destroy your bed deck. Um, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, UV light doesn't work, okay? If you're still thinking it works, I, I'm, I feel sorry for you because it doesn't, okay? It just does not work, all right? UV light reduces C. diff counts by only a log one or less. That's the Anderson studies, including the Better D study and Rand Dive study and it failed to reduce C. diff infections in the Anderson study. So Anderson, anybody who says the Better D study was a positive study is crazy. They need to read their study again, okay? It failed. The primary outcome was that they were looking and hoping that using a UV light would decrease C. diff infections. It did not. Go read the study yourself if somebody's trying to tell you that it did. So uh, UV light doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, okay? I, I don't know how I can say that enough times. It does not work. Please stop being fooled. Please stop spending money on these things. Go start doing the right thing and cleaning these rooms correctly, okay? And it is not part of the UV light. I, I feel sorry that people have been sold this bill of goods, okay? So uh, Healthcare in Ontario did a systematic review, said... UV light doesn't work, and the costs are huge. Anderson study, huge, funded by partially by the CDC, didn't work. Chin, UV light, didn't work. I don't know what you need. Stop reading these one-off case reports that the UV light manufacturers dangle in front of your face. It doesn't work. The studies that have looked at it scientifically, objectively, without interference by the manufacturers, it doesn't work. Okay? Stop wasting your money. Do something that works. Oh my gosh. Damaged mattresses. I it, it, There's no way, unless you're living in an alternate universe, that you don't realize that you've got a lot of damaged mattresses in your hospital. Okay? This has been studied a number of times. I've published one of the last articles. Mark's was the first in 2018. 32% of their hospital mattresses uh, were damaged. And I mean, they were looking just damaged to the point it needs to be removed, totally removed, okay? Bradbury, 27% had failed. Damage on the interior. Again, totally ruined. The mattress is shot, the cover, the inside, it's gone. You can't use it anymore. Burn it. We showed 72% of hospital mattresses in a, quite a large study, uh, 727, uh, were damaged. Now, some of those, required, most of them were just the cover was shot. The inside hadn't been ruined yet. Okay. That was about 47%. The other 25%, pretty much in line with Marks and Bradbury, required total replacement. The sh there was blood crud inside, the core was bad, fire barrier, it's it's shot, okay? 
And you're like, no way. Our hospital, no, we're fine. We bought new beds three years ago. Go open your beds. I guarantee you, your numbers are consistent with this. And you're going to be shocked. And we've been in, I, I, I have gone and looked at hospitals that have much worse numbers than this. Okay. If you've got five-year-old beds on average, oh my gosh, you'll be way hot north of this. Uh, so what was the types of damage that I found in this study? Uh, holes in the mattress cover, 59%. Interestingly, many of these holes were visible by the naked eye, but the majority were only visible when we shined a light and it light came through. And you can say, well, if light's coming through, you can see the hole, the pinholes, okay? And stains on the interior cover, 24%. That means fluids have gotten inside blood, body fluids. Um, so top cover had some, bottom cover had some, so it's all the way around. And you can see this mattress down in that bottom right has been unzipped, okay? And I don't know if you knew that, but most hospital bed mattresses can be unzipped. The problem is the OR mattresses can't, and many of the ER mattresses cannot. And they're probably contaminated and ruined. And you are literally spreading infection from patient to patient to patient. Uh, I laid on a mattress once back when I was in training many years ago. Um, so this is not a new problem, guys, by the way. Um, so I laid on a mattress and blood oozed out of the mattress onto me. Okay. And this happens uh, in the study I did at APIC. 50% uh, of people had had incidences in their hospital that had patients been exposed to blood and body fluids. Guys, you got to open your mattresses. Unzip them. Oh, there's some lovely blood and stuff inside the core of that mattress. Mmm, delicious. 28% uh, of, of the mattresses, um, so 72% were damaged, 28% uh, were not, but that's a mattress with a shot core. So everything's ruined there, not just the cover. Uh, so as I already mentioned, 47% uh, of the total mattresses required replacement of the cover. Um, and another additional 25% required replacement of the cover and core. And this is an interesting thing. We looked at not all of the mattresses had tags on them, uh, so we couldn't say it for all the mattresses, but the ones that still had tags, by the way, you still have to have a tag on every mattress. You're violating the if use if you don't keep the tag on there. Um, but we were seeing failure of some mattresses less than a year, um, 10% of the mattress, or 7.6%, were, were in the one to two year range, two to three years, 20%, three to four years, 46 I mean, look at it. If you think replacing your mattresses a couple of years ago is going to make you so you don't have any failed mattresses, you're, you're, you're just fooling yourself. You're just fooling yourself. Unzip these mattresses. Look inside. Okay, you can't just go, eh, looks cool. It, it looks nice. It's got a little stain on it. No big deal. Uh-huh. It is a big deal. And oh, by the way, if there's a stain, that's a damaged mattress by the FDA, and that's supposed to come out of, out of service. Okay. Oh, love these. So embedded soiling stain, you can see on the left. You can see fluid immersion inside in that middle picture. Uh, if you don't know it, all mattresses have fire barriers. Um, that's to prevent someone from burning to death inside of a mattress. It's required under federal law, uh, and that's shot. That's completely shot. So uh, you can also look up there. You can see some delamination of the mattress cover is starting to delaminate and come apart. Ah, how many of y'all know how many of your beds are rusted? Oh, by the way, that's that's a badly rusted bed. Uh, we've identified rust on 24% of beds. 65 or 9% had widespread rust like the one on the right there and 110 had localized rust. And you're like, oh my gosh, we just, we'll get some, uh, what is that spray paint that's supposed to cover rust? Uh, I forgot what, a Krylon or something. Uh, and you, no, you can't. That bed has to be taken out of service, sent for sand blasting and powder coating, which will cost you thousands of dollars. Uh, most state health departments and local health departments, if there's rust on a bed, it immediately has to come out of service. Guess what loves to grow in rust? 
bacteria. Though there's bacteria in all that rust. So you, you, you can't have rust. So if you've got rust on your beds, they got to come out of service and be spray paint or sandblasted and, and powder coated. This is not just take it downstairs, take a little sandpaper, sand it off and spray paint it. Uh-uh-uh, can't do that. That A, won't work, and B, is not according to the manufacturer's uh, instructions for use. So we're putting patients at risk, okay? Uh, I already mentioned in the study from 2019 at APIC, 52% uh, of hospitals uh, or the, uh, the infection control specialist uh, mentioned that they had had, 52% said they had had patients exposed. Blood and cytomaction, you've seen that picture already. Uh, so infections related to mattresses, okay? These are some reports I'm going to talk about, but you know and I know there's many more than this, okay? All right? It's just a lot of people don't publish their, oh, gosh, we killed some people. But uh, Basquet, good for them. I appreciate them putting this out there. Outbreak of Enterobacter cloacea uh, associated with therapeutic beds. Uh, they killed four people. 18 were infected or colonized. This is serious, guys. We are killing people and giving people life-changing infections that can ruin their lives. Uh, Van der Marquette, I can't pronounce it, I apologize. Multi-resistant enterobacter cloacea uh, in intensive care, therapeutic beds, 15 colonized are infected. And by the way, how did they stop this? They changed all the mattresses. Poof. So if you're having an outbreak right now of MRSA, CRS, VRE in your hospital, I'll bet you it's your mattresses. You can worry about your hand washing till you're blue in the face. Go check your mattresses. Unzip them. I bet you got a bunch of failed mattresses. You got an ICU with a big problem? Please go unzip your mattresses. You can figure it out and stop it right now. Uh, Cadeau, uh, extended spectrum beta lactamase producing Klebsiella pneumonia. There has been another recent Klebsiella pneumonia outbreak out uh, northwest. Um, revealed incubators as the pathogen in the neonatal intense or neonatal care unit. 21 neonates infected. All mattresses were contaminated when they opened them up. Problem is, a lot of these mattresses don't have zippers. You just have to assume they're infected. I can tell you they are. They're contaminated and they're going to get make a patient be infected. So if you got an outbreak right now, the mattress, the Trojan horse. Uh, Cohen uh, and Cohen showed an association between healthcare associated, infe associated infections and exposure to hospital roommates with previous bed occupants with the same organism. Um, so 531% increase in infections of previous patient had an infection. This is a wide range of infections. Holy cow. That bothers me. You know, um, we, we've got to do better than this. Um, damaged mattresses must be replaced. The FDA, CDC, ECRI, everybody, and the AMA is saying... Routine mattress inspection must be done, and if we've got damaged mattresses with any visible signs of stains, wear, or damage, stains even, the mattress should come out. The cover should be replaced. Damaged mattresses clearly have been linked to deaths and outbreaks. If you've got an outbreak right now, please go and zip your mattress. So what are the issues? Disinfectants are destroying our mattress covers because everybody's doing these single processes, leaving the chemicals on there that are not approved for use on soft, non-porous, or soft porous surfaces. Expected life of integrated cover is different on mattress core uh, than the mattress core, requiring uh, you to change these. If you don't change these, you void your mattress core warranty. So you, if you look at, I, I challenge you to go look at what your current warranty is for whatever bed you own or beds you own. And I can guarantee you the cover max will be three years. Many will be one year. You're supposed to replace it. The warranty's gone. You are only warranted to the, to the end of the 
life that they projected for that item. It needs to come out of service. It's a lot of money. I get it, but you owe it to the patients. One step disinfection does not work. Um, and so you're going to get infections six times as much. Uh, mattress manufacturer warnings on infection risk of not replacing the cover. Inspect Life already said that. And disinfectants are rusting at your beds. And finally, I'm sorry, but you need to give the EVS worker enough time to do what you're going to ask them to do. You cannot expect that bed to turn over in 20 minutes. You're really talking a couple hours. But we owe it to our patients. So what can you do? Well, follow the MIFUs, do a five to six step process, do the inspections. Um, the mattress is again, only gonna last one to two years. You should have a plan with a budget for replacement of those covers. You just gotta get them out of there. Don't wait until a patient has blood oozing out on them or you have an outbreak of VRE, CRE, CRS or something else in your hospital. Replace them early or prevent them from being damaged. Inspection must be routine. You've got to look for holes, tears, zippers that have gone bad. Check all sides of the mattress, not just the top. Not, don't, don't just glance at the top. That bacteria can come right up to get on the patient. Uh, open them if they have a zipper. If they don't, assume they're shot at one year, probably. So all your ORs, th those tables that you've had the same mattress on for the last 20 years, Ooh, oh my God, I have no clue what's going to be in them, but it'll be nasty. And immediately replace all damaged mattresses. There's some people talking about patching. That's CDC says don't patch. You know it's not going to work. What's going to happen? Patching get put on. There's no studies looking at the integrity of that mattress, and then bacteria is going to get under the edge of it. Please do not use patches. They're not approved. Don't do it. The, ma the manufacturers say don't do it. You can use the launderable mattress cover if there exists one. There it does. There's two possible ways to do that. There's some manufacturers that make one or they make mattress covers that can actually be taken off and laundered. That is a nightmare. Good luck if you can try to do that. And then there is a removable launderable cover um, that is out there that you can hear more about. Um, and don't think you can just go to Walgreens or excuse me, Walmart and get a plastic cover for your mattress because that won't breathe. Remember, we put all this polyurethane so we had moisture vapor transmission. And if you try putting just a plastic cover on this, you're going to have patients get parasitic ulcers. So um, if you want to get credit for this, uh, grab your phone real quick uh, and get the QR code on the next um, slide and that will take you uh, you'll fill out a small, short form and then you'll answer some questions and you'll get your CE credit you got to finish this the post activity survey remember that's the new rules you can't get CE without that so again give you a second to take a picture of that QR code um, let me make sure that my picture is not in the way and uh, so you can do that. Please capture that real quick. I'll give you another few seconds to do that. Um, so scan that code and you can get your CE credits. Uh, if you are watching this um, later, um, you can use, uh, and you're watching on a computer as a webinar, you can use this, uh, type in this uh, code and do the same thing to get your CE credits. And if you have any questions, concerns, interested in seeing any of the articles that I referenced, uh, just wanna talk to me, please contact me. I have, I, I'm so passionate about this. We have got to do better for our patients. I know every one of you care about your patients. I care tremendously about mine. And so let's do a better job. Let's protect our patients. And uh, you can email me hooker e at xavier.edu. And thank you so much for all your time today and have a great day.